Evolution is a massive topic in your final exams. I'm talking more than 40 marks. And if you combine it with human evolution, we're looking at a huge section in your finals. And that's why it's important to practice as many past paper questions as possible. And so in this series, I'm going to be covering past paper questions, how best to answer them, and how to get full marks every single time. Welcome back everyone to Miss Angler's biology class. I am Miss Angler. In today's video, we are going to be tackling a tricky, 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 quite challenging evolution question, specifically on natural selection. Now, it's not out of a huge uh, amount of marks, only out of nine marks, um, but it's definitely one of the more challenging and advanced level questions that I've seen in a past paper. And so I wanted to give you an example of your worst scenario. And one of the most challenging things about these questions is they are difficult to prepare for if you don't have your study uh, guideline, you know, your exam guideline, if you're not using that for these kinds of questions, you are really going to struggle in this section. And speaking of which, if you haven't got your hands on the life sciences cheat sheet, what are you doing? It's literally been written by me so that you can get marks easily in exams. You can get full marks all the time simply by following my top tips as well as all of the summaries where I've taken huge amounts of content and I've made them super easy, super simple and, and short. You know, that's why it's called the cheat sheet. So let's now dive into this natural selection question. This is definitely a more challenging question and I would say it's hard. It might be medium to some of you because you think, oh, this is pretty straightforward. But what I find is people struggle to um, apply their knowledge to this situation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through the question itself. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to explain how you would answer it. And we'll end the video off by showing you the official memo as well. So you can have a reference for that. Now, it says there are two variations in the color of king snakes. Some have bright, colorful patterns and others have a dull pattern. King snakes are non-poisonous to their predators. Okay. Coral snakes, on the other hand, have a bright color pattern but are poisonous to their predators. This is a defense mechanism as predators avoid them. Scientists observed that there were king snakes that shared the same habitat with the coral snakes. There were more king snakes uh, that had bright, colorful patterns. And the diagram represents the distribution of snakes. So we've got our coral snakes here, which are our circles. We've got our bright king snakes, which are the colored and triangles. And then we have got our dulls. And you'll notice there aren't very many dull individuals. Now, already you should be thinking to yourself, what are they going to ask me about this? What are they trying to get at here? And before we go any further, they are trying to show you that these king snakes... They are harmless, right? They're harmless. But in order to keep themselves safe, they mimic other snakes. They mimic coral snakes. And when they're a bright color, they're more likely to be alive in the area. And we know this by looking at the diagram because there are a lot of brightly colored king snakes by those colored in triangles. And you'll notice the dull king snakes, the ones I've just colored here in blue, there aren't very many of them. So they're obviously not successful. And that probably has something to do with the fact that predators can't tell the difference between a coral snake and a king snake. So now with that in your mind, thinking, hmm, these harmless snakes are mimicking these poisonous snakes, how would that play into evolution? Well, if you think about it, natural selection would mean that the snakes that are brightly colored are more likely to survive, while those dull snakes are less likely to survive. You see where I'm getting at? Let's have a look at the questions. So, 
Question number one says, explain, and remember it's an explain question, so we must structure that correctly, how bright color patterns of coral snakes influences their survival. Now, it's for three marks, and so there's a good structure I always tell all my pupils to do for explain. You can use the words statement and reason or cause and effect, whichever one helps you, right? And so for this one, I'm going to use the cause and the effect structure. Now, this one is out of three, which means there must be two effects and one cause. And yes, that's always how it works. There is always a cause with all the effects, or there's always a statement with the reasons attached to it. Now, let's explain with a cause. The fact that the brightly colored coral snakes, how does that influence it? Well, cause. Bright color equals poisonous, right? And that's because the predators think that being bright is meaning that you're poisonous. They can't tell that one's a coral snake and one's a king snake. And so what is the effect of that? Well, that means that the bright colored snakes are going to survive, right? And the dull are going to die. And so the final effect is there's going to be a reduced predation on those brightly colored snakes. Okay. Now you'll notice that I don't really talk about the dull snakes. And that's a trap that many of us fall into. They're not asking what's happening in the dull snakes. If you look back at the question, it just asks about bright. And you only talk about bright colors, right? So don't talk about the dull snakes. We don't want to know about them. That's probably why you're not getting any full marks for these questions, because you're talking about this other snake. And I know that you need to understand what the other snake is, but you don't need it for your answer. Let's move into the longer question. The next question says, use Darwin's theory of evolution through natural selection to explain why there are more brightly colored king snakes in this habitat. So step one, everybody, for this question, you must, must, must use your guideline. Okay, your exam guideline. And that's going to give you the step-by-step -step answer that you're going to use. However, this part is important. You can't simply just use the guideline as is. Because right now it says something like there is variation in a population. Some organisms um, have the favorable trait and others do not. Those that have the favorable trait survive. Those that do not have the favorable trait die. You have a general answer there but you don't have a specific answer that is matching our snakes. So instead, what you're going to do is you are going to substitute in your snake variation. So you could say something like there is a variation in snake color or the brightness of that. And then what you're going to do is you are going to say that there are some that are bright, so we've got bright snakes, and we've also got dull snakes, right? So acknowledge the color differences. Next, you need to indicate which is favorable and which is unfavorable. So you could say in like a long sentence saying that the bright is favorable, or in this instance, bright means you will survive, and if you're a dull snake, you will die, right? So we've got bright snakes have the favorable trait, they survive. The dull snakes, they have the unfavorable trait, they die. Now because those that are bright survive, right? So those bright snakes survive, they are able to reproduce. And when they reproduce, they pass on the gene for the bright color and therefore, there is a, the last point, a higher frequency, which just means occurrence, of the bright color. And so what you have successfully done here is you have taken the generic answer and you've substituted in the snake example. And that's going to get you your six out of six. 
So here for your reference, I've included the official marking guideline. It's important to look at these guidelines because you must actually spend a little bit of time studying them. I'll just show you now how my cause and effect thing works. But if you look here at 3.2.1, uh, here is my cause and here are the effects, right? Or my statement with my reason. So cause, bright color pattern is associated with being poisonous. Effect of that means they're less eaten. Effect of that means they have a higher chance of survival. And in reference to our second question here, yet again, we are substituting in the snake example into the guideline. And that is always going to get you full marks. You will notice it says any six. So that means that you can provide any six of these points and still do well. Now that was a challenging question. I know that maybe at first it seemed very simple and straightforward, but as you can see, there is always some nuance and difficulty when it comes to these kinds of application level questions. And the only way to prepare for application is to repeat, repeat, attempt and attempt as many different questions so that you're never you know caught off guard or surprised in an exam because you've seen something like it before now if you found this challenging don't worry there are many other videos that i've created where i walk you through exam questions similar to this a little bit easier as well sometimes if you want to try those too and i've linked those above now for you to go and check out and i'm constantly adding more and more videos as we go through the exam season but i hope you had a good time today and you've learned something everyone and i will see you all again soon bye